2015, in the darkness of midnight, a team of Mexican Marines led by a man named El Marino Loco stormed the house of an infamous drug lord, El Mimido, to capture him. After El Mimido was successfully captured, El Marino Loco took laws into his own hands by making El Mimido wear a female dress and kiss his hitman in a bid to amuse his squad. This action and so many others by El Marino Loco made him hated and feared by almost every drug lord in Mexico. But before we get into the details, we need to first answer the question, who is El Marino Loco? The Mystery Man Eric Morales Guevara, alias El Marino Loco, was an infantryman in the Mexican Navy. He's described by his peers to be dark-skinned, 5 foot 7 inches tall and having an amazing athletic build. He never showed his face, always wearing a hoodie, a mask or sunglasses so even his eyes couldn't be seen. And he had good reasons to do this because many drug lords were after him. But make no mistake, this didn't scare him at all. El Marino Loco and the team of marines under his command were determined to crack down every single drug lord in the states of Tamaulipas and Nuevo León. But it wasn't just capturing drug lords that made El Marino Loco famous. It was what he made him do that really put him in the spotlight. El Marino on several occasions made high-profile drug lords dress up in female lingerie and sometimes he went as far as making them do homosexual acts. But before you rule El Marino's actions as being absurd, you first need to know just how dangerous these drug lords were and why in some way, many would say that they deserve the treatment given to them by El Marino Loco. The Ruthless Gulf Cartel El Marino Loco was primarily operating in the state of Tamaulipas but so was the infamous and notorious Gulf Cartel. And if there's one thing you need to know about this cartel, it's the fact that they showed no mercy in their operations around Mexico. No one dared cross paths with these guys. They had the local police and residents in the area under their control. They did whatever they wanted, whenever they wanted. Apart from the exportation of drugs to the US and Western Africa, the Gulf Cartel was involved in money laundering, extortion, kidnapping, arms trafficking, and many other illegal acts that put their organization in the bad books of El Marino Loco. But there was one particular activity carried out by the Gulf Cartel that led El Marino Loco and other Mexican Marines to really hunt them down. Their involvement in Mexico's largest prostitution network. Around the time El Marino Loco was deployed to the city of Tamaulipas, the Gulf Cartel started a prostitution ring that involved the kidnapping of sex workers and trafficking of women in the country. More than 200 girls went missing in the state, and a lot more were used by this cartel as informants. So it wasn't a question of, did these cartel drug lords deserve a brutal punishment for their crimes? It was more of, who would get the job done? And that's where El Marino Loco comes back into the picture. Abuse of Power 2006, a series of videos from El Marino Loco got millions of views on YouTube, making him kind of famous. These were videos of El Marino Loco and his team humiliating drug lords they had captured. And this little fame that El Marino acquired came right after he was assigned to the border city of Reynosa. His order was to capture the presumed regional leader of the Gulf Cartel in Reynosa, Julian Luisa Salinas aka El Comandante Toro. El Marino was so close to capturing Comandante Toro, but out of nowhere, he was transferred to the city of Tamaulipas, where he became the Gulf Cartel's number one enemy. This obviously made El Marino Loco furious, considering Julian was one of his biggest enemies. And although destiny eventually delivered Salinas to the hands of El Marino Loco, as you'll find out in a bit, the next set of drug lords he dealt with would have wished they were never born, rather than do the things El Marino made them do. His operation was to raid the house of the former mayor of Altamira, Avenal Hernandez Llano, who according to reports was working with the Gulf Cartel. But on getting to Llano's residence, El Marino met Llano and his son who instead redirected him and his team to the house of the Gulf Cartel leader in the area, Silvestre Aro Rodriguez, also known as El Chive. El Chive was a bigger fish to catch, so El Marino took the bait. But it was from this point on that he began taking the law into his own hands. On getting to El Chive's house, El Chive himself was nowhere to be found. And El Marino wasn't the type of guy to just walk away without leaving a mark. So he raided El Chive's house, destroyed his valuables, even stole the ashes of El Chive's late father, and also marred a photograph of his father found on the premises. 
Obviously, Loco could have left without doing these things, but he did them anyway. And to make matters worse, on his way out of El Chiva's house, he stumbled upon three thugs whom he beat to a pulp, all in a bid to get the actual location of El Chiva. And seemingly, he knew how to get answers out of people, because shortly after, El Chive was eventually captured in a hospital in Tampico, and his brother, Marco Antonio Otto Rodriguez, was also captured a few days later. But El Marino Loco wasn't done. During the same operation, Loco carried out yet another of his humiliation acts on El Mimido, a drug lord under the Gulf Cartel. This is where it became clear that El Marino didn't care how tough or strong these drug lords were. He was afraid of no one, making sure these criminals passed through hell before he handed them to Mexican police to take legal action. El Marino forced El Mimido to wear a lady's dress, put on some lip gloss, and kiss his own hitmen, while Loco and his team recorded and made fun of him. When the video was posted on social media, everyone was angry at Loco. And I mean everyone. Leaders of the Gulf Cartel, the public, and even officers in the Mexican Marines. Several Navy officials called his methods unorthodox and unprofessional. Despite the huge success El Marino Loco and his team had gotten in capturing these drug lords, since the Gulf Cartel seemingly was unable to catch him, they instead tried bribing him with the most expensive gifts, the best of alcohol, and the sexiest of women. But El Marino Loco sent every gift back, saying he couldn't be bribed. Neither would he rest until every drug lord within his reach was captured. But why exactly did El Marino have to humiliate these drug lords? He could have just captured them and taken them into custody, right? Well, not quite. Loco himself gave his reason for humiliating them by saying this. They made that decision to be thugs, and among the thugs, there has to be someone who's in charge. So that man must be consistently macho and bossy. So when I grab them, dress them as women, humiliate them, make them kiss with others, dance and pose as a woman, it's a way of humiliating them and reminding them that they're never going to be what they think they are. And El Marino Loco had a point. In the country of Mexico, the masculinity of drug lords was taken very seriously. So emasculating these so-called drug lords wasn't only insulting, it was in some way stripping them of their role as a leader. It officially became a war between the entire Gulf Cartel and El Marino Loco. But if there's one thing we've come to realize about El Marino, it's the fact that he never, and I mean never, backs down from a fight. The peak of his time in the Mexican Navy came when he had a standoff with his longtime enemy, Julian Manuel Luisa Salinas, known as Camadante Toro. As I've said before, Camadante was the head of the Gulf Cartel Reynosa, Tamalipas. Toro had his crew kidnap a Mexican Marine and demanded a ransom of 1.5 million pesos from his family. The family could only pay 800,000 pesos, which led the Gulf Cartel to kill this Marine. But little did they know that that was the biggest mistake they could have ever made. The Mexican government obviously wanted to retaliate against this cruel action, and there was no better man for the job than El Marino Loco himself. Loco had been on the trail of Toro, so it was an opportunity for him to finally take the drug lord down. April 2015, it was time for the final battle. El Marino Loco and his team set up 32 highway street blockades, with about 11 of them set up using burning vehicles. These blockades were to prevent Comandante Toro from leaving the city. And during the last gun battle between the Mexican Marines and Camadante, Toro was finally shot and killed in the operation. But that's not the end of this story. After the operation, El Marino went back to the house of the kidnapped Marine. He then accidentally stepped on a little artifact placed on the ground. He asked the wife of the kidnapped Marine what it was and she told him it was a meat tenderizer. He asked if he could take it along with him. But she asked what he wanted to use it for. And in a husky tone, he said, hit the thugs. And that, people, was how he not only got the infamous meat tenderizer he used to beat up thugs, but also how he got his nicknames Thor and Lord of the Hammer. But it was also the beginning of the end of his glory days. The Fall of El Marino Loco El Marino Loco became famous on social media. He had different songs written about him, but on the other hand, the public expressed mixed reactions to his method of operation. The Gulf Cartel then tried to bring down El Marino Loco legally. They accused him of using stolen weapons, accepting bribes, and stealing El Chive's father's ashes. While only the last bit of those accusations could be confirmed to be true, El Marino couldn't defend himself, and so he was dismissed from the Mexican Navy officially. But you should know that a guy like Loco wouldn't just quit so easily. 
Some sources claim that he's collaborating with the authorities down at Sonora to reduce the crime rate caused by the Aztec country at the border. While other sources claim this man is having some fun in Michoacan, where he continues to capture and dress his victims in women's lingerie. And this makes a lot of sense because the Mexican authorities have reported a few cases where criminals in Michoacan were actually seen dressed and handcuffed in female lingerie. The Gulf Cartel felt they had seen the end of El Marino Loco after his official dismissal from the Mexican Navy, but what they didn't know is that Loco wasn't planning on backing down just yet. His Unexpected Return Well, as heroic as El Marino Loco seems to be, his actions were against the law. And the crazy part is, it influenced other Mexican officials. About 2,400 suspected criminals were brutally pounced on and tortured between 2013 and 14. Some of the forms of torture used include placing plastic bags over the heads of victims to coerce them into divulging information. In one of the more gruesome cases, a video was leaked to the U.S. site Breitbart, Texas, showing a federal police agent and a military police officer interrogating, or should I say, torturing a woman with a bag over her head. And keep in mind that they did this without being certain whether or not that woman in question was actually a criminal. This leaked footage brought out more criticism on El Marino Loco's unorthodox methods of handling criminals, even after his dismissal from the Navy. But as a form of response to the public, El Marino Loco agreed to an interview in 2021, where he left his final message to Mexico. He said, and I quote, I'm already in Sonora along with my team. None of us are criminals, nor do we have a criminal record. We're ex-military, trained, and prepared for whatever. We don't harm anyone who doesn't owe it. We come from the South, and we've already calmed down fights there. Now it's the North, then the center. While it's almost obvious that those drug lords got what they deserved, are you for or against the actions of El Marino Loco?